welcome to Watercolor by Scarlet Damon. Today we're going to talk about pencils and paint and the relationship that they can often have um, on our paper. So I'm actually running out of stuff. I had to dig out these in order to show you. I wanted to show you what the erasers look like. This is, um, this is a kneaded eraser. This is what it looks like when you first buy it. Now, it doesn't necessarily say Brosner on it. Um, this is the company that I like to purchase my stuff from. It's a European company. Now, you, it initially comes in a square and it's beautiful and squishy and all nice and clean. Once you start to use it, it becomes quite messy. The cool thing about this eraser is you can pull it apart and there's actually a little bit of things in here. I think my nephew has been playing with it. Um, right now it's pretty cool and I could warm it up. Now I could hold it over top of the fireplace, the wood stove, that would work really well. Just in my hand, just hold it over there and it would soften and warm up. Alternatively, I can hold it in my hand and squish it for a while until it gets a little softer and a little warmer. It'll eventually become a nice, soft, gooey, workable, mushable thing. So right now it's not. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, can you guys see the difference? Look at this. Now it's nice and soft. I'm going to squish it into a ball and give it a little pull. It pulls apart really easy. So every time I do this, it's just like kneading bread, which is probably why it's called the kneaded eraser. You just knead it. You pull it apart, squish it back together, mush it around, and it actually cleans itself. So the dirt ends up on the inside, the outside is nice and fresh. And the fun thing about this eraser is you can make tiny little points. So if you wanted to get into a small area, now you don't rub it, that's key, you don't rub it. You're just dabbing. It's a very light dab, and that's enough to pull the graphite out of the paper. So I like to roll it into something like this, to a little sausage shape, and then take that and gently roll that across my picture. And the harder you push, the more you're gonna get, but you can also go really, really lightly and just pick up a little bit of your picture. So if you want your image to stay, but you don't want too much of it, you could um, do it that way. So we've got our little drawing. Uh, we, let me just draw it out for you. Okay, something like this. I'm down here, going back up there. And we've got the spine in the middle. Spine goes straight, rolls around the edge. From this point, goes down to the spine. That's the part that's falling over. Then way over here, it's going something like that. A little bumpity bump, a little swizzle, comes pretty straight up here, matches with that. So that's that for a whole piece back here. Then we've got a little turn here. Can you guys see this? It goes up around, down, there's a double there because it's twisted over, in and out, in and out, up and down, up and down, around here, okay. Now from where I'm looking, which is gonna be different from where you guys would see it, it's over here is our, um, our stem. And then going back like this. Now this one just came straight down, pretty much straight down, kind of hit, meets in a point. And this one's all rolled over, it's quite the leaf. And then in here, we have the rest of these little bumps that go up there. Yeah, okay, so this is going that way. And because it comes out here, this actually needs to match there. And then this is the underside of that leaf. Like so, somewhere in here, and I'm going to gently kind of draw it on so I can make sure it's in the right place. We have that, and we have one going here, and we have one going up here. So here's my drawing. Now this this is this does not look like a normal leaf. I mean that's that's what it is. We've got a lot of foreshortening. It's looking really weird. Um, I don't want the stem to be so long, so I can go ahead and just pull that out. I'm just gently going back and forth, making little circles. I also don't need this little line, so I can tap that out right in the middle. And you see how simple that comes out? Today's class is about drawing on the paper and then painting on top, like what to do, how, how to interact between that pencil page and paint. Now later in an upcoming tutorial, I am going to talk about drawing as an art form, as an actual technique to draw and do your shading and pencil and then paint on top and what that looks like and how 
how many artists have done that for a long time and then it's it's a beautiful way to draw and paint but for now we're going to talk about not keeping this picture underneath your drawing so we, we're talking about um having a, as little marks as possible on the page so i've gone ahead and made my little sausage i'm going to lightly roll it across and you guys can see every time i pass it gets a little lighter a little lighter a little lighter lighter. Now in some areas I want to go back and forth because I pushed a little harder here. Up there maybe a little bit too. So what I'm looking for is a map. A very light road map. And I want to take all of this graphite off. All the, the extra graphite. I want to pull that off. I don't want to dab it or wiggle it around in any one spot because I want to be able to see the entire thing. But I don't want it to be so much that when I come along with my brush later and let's find a brush. So when I come along with my brush later and I'm putting paint down and I'm putting down water that that graphite doesn't lift off and mix with my, with my paint and my water creating a muddier look. So maybe I want a perfectly white highlight but all of a sudden it turned gray or I wanted the yellow and all of a sudden it's turning a mucky yellow. Like the way to get away from that is to use something like a kneaded eraser. Now a normal eraser, for example, this one, and I really don't want to have to uh, show you how this works because I'm going to ruin the page. Now a normal eraser will do a lot of damage and I don't even know if this eraser is strong enough because I'm not sure. And I think my paper is really good, but if I was using um, a thin paper, uh, a very, very thick paper, so if I was using any kind of thin paper and I really went at it with my eraser and say I'm drawing, I'm drawing something and then I'm erasing it and then I'm drawing something else and then I'm erasing it and I'm just keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. What's going to happen really quickly is that this part where I keep going back and forth, I'm actually removing the sizing for, and I'm, I'm damaging the paper by doing that. Now you might not see it. It doesn't look too bad right now. And in this paper, I'm really going to have to work on it for a while to, to get a good, uh, to damage the page. I might actually use up my entire little eraser here. But that's okay. Anything for you guys. So I'm trying to lift it off. So if you're using typical watercolor paper, just normal student grade watercolor paper, pretty quickly you're going to notice that the, the eraser is going to leave marks. And this is going to change the way your paint looks. I don't know if it's gonna work because I don't actually own any student grade paper, but let's see if we can we can bring this out. So I've got some yellow over here. Let's say I paint across. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it. Okay. So I'm gonna paint across. Okay. Now, it's really hard to see, but right in the middle here where we did all that erasing, the paper, it's a little bumpy, starting to break up into little bits. Um, and later, depending on how much erasing you do, and I, I recommend you guys getting out a little swatch and taking your favorite eraser and going at it and checking it out and then washing the, painting the whole thing with a, with a covering wash um, and then seeing what it looks like, seeing, if you can tell a difference. And it's really good to know because you will have an idea of how much erasing you can do before you're damaging your page, before your paper starts to fall apart when you're painting. Because the last thing you wanna do is draw on your paper, have this beautiful image that you've got all ready to go, start painting, and then realize that you've gone back and forth so many times that now you have spots that are actually a different color, where the paint sits differently, it soaks in, or where the, the paper's starting to come off. Most people say you should really draw out your picture on a different piece of paper and then transfer it over. So my personal opinion is, if you take the time to transfer your image using a light box or some kind of transfer paper, and you're kind of tracing it out, I don't feel that the image looks as good. If you're gonna erase it off completely anyway, then it doesn't matter, then go ahead and do that because all you want is a paint. And there are definitely styles in which that's the way you wanna go. If on the other hand, you're hoping that that picture is going to shine through, the little bit of, of pencil lines are gonna shine through and kind of help create the overall feeling of your image, then 
um, then you're gonna want the pencil lines to be correct and to flow and to look like they're done on purpose, not to be choppy. So I guess my overall message here is when it comes to drawing on your page, I recommend taking the time to draw it out separately, but then really draw it a few times. Get really used to how you're drawing, know your subject, know what you're doing, and then go ahead and gently, carefully, but calmly draw it out on your page. The best thing would be to learn how to draw take some time and learn how to draw. I mean, you're taking the time to learn how to paint, so why not take some time to learn how to draw? I promise it'll make a world of a difference to your work, to your brush strokes, uh, to your final image, you know, and it's a lot of fun. Drawing is wonderful. Drawing is so much fun. I really, I really question why so many people are against taking time to draw like it's a skill and you can't learn it, which is, you know, it's just not true. You can totally learn how to draw. So my little leaf is starting to look a little bit more like leaf now that I've got the parts folded over all nice and colorful. And also on the inside, it's gonna be darker, right? Cause it's all in the shadow in there. The next thing to think about when painting with pencil marks is that yellow will not release pencil. I know we're back to yellow. We talked about yellow a few days. The power of yellow, how it can push other paints out of the way. And it does that, it's pretty awesome. Uh, you can check out that video if you're interested. It's very short. Many other colors. Uh, will release the pencil, will release the graphite, but yellow will lock it in place. So if you're going to paint something and you're thinking, well, I'm just gonna go over it afterwards, I'm just going to erase the whole thing, avoid using yellow, because it won't let it go. I am going to finish this painting and I'm going to put the results on Instagram and uh, on a blog post on my school. Uh, I will probably put it on as a video, but maybe not, we'll see. I did post something this morning. I used the radicator on the last uh, little leaf that I did a few days ago. I'm not done, but I did start to do it. And you can see these lines have come out more. They're way too big, it actually looks like the back of the leaf, but I'm going to fill them in and close it up a little bit. So this has also been posted on uh, at, at my school. There's a little piece about it, and also on Instagram I posted a picture, the before and the after. But I'm not finished, so I will definitely um, be adding more. I wanna close these lines and add a few more layers to this image. So if you guys are following along and you're watching every day, um, you will be able to see what happens because I'll throw this into the end of one of the upcoming tutorials when it's all finished. I'm Scarlett, thanks for watching and I will see you tomorrow.